Oh look, there's, a, there's somebody. A lone figure playing. Just back from school. What is it? Say it again. Hand lock. Hand lock. Ah, hold it. What is it? Hey, just playing some hover. Over 4,000 years, India has developed one of the world's great civilizations. It is the birthplace of modern mathematics, all European languages, and several of the world's great religions. The ancient cultural heritage continues to be strong in crafts and music, the way many Indians live, as well as in science and technology. With a billion people making up roughly one-fifth of the world's population, Indian society can often seem chaotic to Westerners. 70% of Indians are engaged in basic agriculture, but India is also one of the world's most advanced industrial economies. With the greatest amount of engineers and scientists in the world after the US and Russia, it is fast emerging as an economic force in technology. But to take advantage of its economic opportunities, India needs to explore new ways of overcoming technological exclusion. <laughs> Travelling around India, you can't help but notice the huge interest in computers and the internet. The omnipresent STD PCO signs demonstrate the success of the public call office, which has given shopkeepers throughout India a financial incentive to provide a kiosk phone service to passers-by. Many have also installed PCs to provide internet access. New technology has become big business in India. In five years, they expect a $40 billion export in IT-related products, services and outsourcing from the West, despite the recent global economic downturn. Even in remote areas of Rajasthan, tiny businesses are becoming micro-multinationals by going online and offering services abroad. Some of India's homegrown technology has attracted major international attention. The Simputer is a low-cost device designed to translate between a number of different languages and speak the information aloud. The design of technologies like the Simputer is key for India, addressing the country's immense language and literacy issues. There are 26 official languages and a further 1,800 unofficial languages, and while almost the entire population has some understanding of English, half are illiterate, and more so in rural areas where three quarters of all Indians live. The critical challenge for India is to design enabling technologies that bring information to all. To address these issues, Dr. Sagata Mitra, head of the R&D lab at NIIT, a pioneering software developer, embarked on a project to provide free internet access for children. The project started with a simple question. Can children, regardless of their background, learn without assistance? In the early 1990s, Dr. Mitra led a series of computer summer schools for urban children with no experience of technology. With minimal direction, the children began to explore the networked environments. Their learning increased through incidental discovery and input from peers. In January 1999, Dr. Mitra conducted an experiment with the children who lived in the slum that bordered his South Delhi office. He installed a monitor in the boundary wall. It became the first hole-in-the-wall experiment. Interested in the findings, the Delhi government sponsored several more kiosks in both urban and rural areas, and this led to more outside interest and support. In 
In October 2001, Dr. Mitra and his team went to the south of India with ICICI, one of India's leading investment banks, who are funding five new kiosks. They visited potential sites in remote parts of Maharashtra. The locations were geographically different and had basic connectivity, essentially electricity and a telephone line. The multidisciplinary team in southern India consisted of a scientist, a technologist, an anthropologist, a psychologist and an interaction and content designer. An awareness of design has become increasingly important for this project. As well as the psychological and engineering factors, understanding the local community and needs of the end users is critical to the project's success. Meetings were held with the local teachers, parents and children. The team used questionnaires to gauge attitudes to and perceptions of technology and social patterns and community landmarks were mapped to assess what was important to the children. In this particular experiment, for me what is important is that I actually understood design in the middle of it all. And then as more experiments started to happen and as it started to expand, then I figured that now I need to design first before I actually go in. You know, As this great realization was descending on me, I was also meeting more and more designers. So, and... Uh, once I started meeting designers, I think I began to understand a little bit more about design. Um, so if I had to make an excuse for myself, I would say that uh, nowhere in the science and engineering curriculum is design considered a subject. So, so to a lot of people, design simply means making something look prettier. You know, uh, whereas it is, it is not that. You realize that when you meet a designer, and then you realize that design is actually about imagining things. We don't interfere. We don't say that you come first, you come mm -hmm. second and most places I find that after some initial fighting mm -hmm. they will work out a system. Mm -hmm. And in some places they actually work out a paper timetable. <laughs> of who will use when and they all this they do on their own they segregate between boys and girls all that they do uh, on their own so installed over the next few weeks the kiosks will be low cost low maintenance and take into account potential problems created by the tropical climate and the sun's glare though kiosks are positioned near local schools they are not managed by them a villager is nominated to keep an eye on the kiosks, ensuring they open and close at the same times every day. Using webcams and sensors, the team will be able to monitor usage, respond to the children and fix any technical problems remotely from their office in Delhi. Back in Delhi, the internet kiosks are as busy as ever. The team discovered that children learn faster in groups and they organise themselves so everyone gets to take a turn. More advanced children become teachers for the less experienced and room is made for very young children to watch and learn. So they're learning from their brothers and sisters. You can see that bricks, you know? This is uh, this oh, bricks yeah. has been took for this, this for children. Smaller, uh, the smaller, yeah. smaller kids. Was that the end? You you climb on that and just, was that the end? just to remove joystick and play computers. And yeah. How the children take to the kiosks is demonstrated clearly in this video from one of the first experiments. It's the first time that in his life that he had seen a computer. So he came and he started pushing it. He realized that if he moves his finger here, something moves on the screen. So then he got interested. He started moving. Now on the touchpad, if you hit the finger like this, then it is like hitting the mouse. So you will see that at 2.36, about 5 minutes later, he actually made his first click and the screen changed. So when that happened, you'll see what he did. <laughs> like that. And so, it was completely unbelievable, but it is on video, that he started surfing 8 minutes later. He started to use the internet 8 minutes later. 
almost as though he had jumped across some two or three thousand years of history in eight minutes. So then he became the teacher. In Delhi, boys clearly dominate the kiosks. However, this is in part due to the urban environment. In safer rural areas, equal numbers of girls use the computers as boys. He used to travel one mile to uh, come to this place. How did he hear about it? Uh, there is one kiosk in uh, their area also. Right. So, uh, so they used to travel kiosk to kiosk. Some people are using that computer. So why not to, uh, go to some other kiosk? Where there might not be so many yeah, kiosks like that. The website the children use is called Our Internet and comprises educational content designed as games and puzzles in a simple and highly visual interface. The site is fast to download with the capability of working offline if the servers go down due to technical or local power failure. Touchpads, joysticks and buttons replace mouse and keyboard, giving a very different user experience. In the absence of a keyboard, they have learnt other ways to write, such as by cutting and pasting letters one by one to construct a word. In earlier experiments, children broke into the kiosk to use computer keyboards to enter usernames and gain access to games. Perhaps the greatest feat came from the group at one kiosk who discovered and disabled a piece of software that Dr Mitra had installed to monitor their activity. They sent him a message in Hindi that read, We have found and closed the thing you watch us with. He's changed the display setting. <laughs> yeah, you can see the start button and the uh, oh, where yeah. it's How did he do that? <laughs> Taking learning into their own hands is seen as a triumph by the monitoring team. But to design for such flexibility in the engineering interface and content will be integral to the future success. What are they learning? Paintings, images, and news items, and news, picture, 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 picture means not the movie. Picture is the still picture, still images of the journalists, leaders, and the film stars like that. Who the Prime Minister looks like and yeah. that kind of thing. Parents have noticed changes in the children's behaviour, such as an increase in the creative activities and an improvement in their English vocabulary, also their ability to focus on tasks. They take responsibility for the care of the kiosk. Dr Mitra believes the social interaction around the kiosks has important consequences as the division between the have and have-nots quickly changes to no and no-nots. To build on social developments, NIIT runs regular workshops at the kiosks with the Delhi government to find out what the children are learning. Discussing issues that are important to them about their community and environment gives NIIT critical insights into how the technology is integrating how it might help them in the future, and what they can do to continue developing appropriate content. What did he say? He has done some painting on the computer. Dr. Mitra points out the economic case for this project to continue. If they install 100,000 kiosks over a five-year period, it will cost two billion US dollars, but potentially this would develop 100 million computer literates with an educational value of six billion US dollars. He is saying it will be very helpful in our life if I select any any profession. He is saying like that. If I go to any area to work yeah. in, the computer is always there. Right. And they have big plans for the future, including the design of adaptive interfaces for the user. Uh, what I would like it to be is. Uh, absolutely immortal piece of, uh, you know, a, a monolith like 2001, I think I said that before somewhere, uh, which kind of opens out to the sunlight, uh, the internet comes into it from everywhere and, uh, and it does its bit and, uh, and it closes itself and it diagnoses itself, it, it's a living thing, it, it should be 
uh, my wish list would be that it should be living and it should be conscious and it should stand there with uh, primary education as its only goal you know <laughs> it would be nice to have a living thing like that uh, it's very very far away but um, but you can see shades of it um, in in little pieces in little uh, tin sheets that fall down and so on but well i guess everyone has to begin somewhere thanks to the project's success the world bank recently committed funding of 1.6 million dollars for 65 new kiosks to be built around india in the coming months